Ska jag byta frisyr? Ska ni byta? Ska ni sänga? Welcome back to Scanny Pictures. My name is Knut hey. and this is my co-host Therese. How are you doing today, Therese? I'm doing okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What have you been, been up tired. to? You're a bit tired. You're really tired. You're just a bit tired. I think I'm very hay feverish at the moment. Um, oh, I'm very sneezy, very raspy. Um, what I've been up to? Uh, I've been writing a new play that's getting nearly finished. Uh, that's been quite fun and taking up quite a lot of my time. Uh, mm -hmm. Today specifically, I've been recording all the parts to um, an arrangement, uh, an SSAA arrangement of Feeling Good. That's been quite fun. All right. Is that an arrangement you did? Uh, no, it isn't actually. Uh, I was lazy and got one. Uh, it's Dorothy Horn. The arranger is called. Uh, it's really lovely. Um, mm. And I bought it for my uh, virtual staff choir that uh. I'm leading for the Barbican. Mm. So yeah. Cool. So yeah, I think recording there's, a, practice parts. there's a lot of virtual choirs going around these days, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, today we are going to be discussing how do you talk to singers? And what a funny topic to be talking about. What, what do we even mean? Like, who's talking to the singers? And why should we care <laughs> how they talk to the singers? What's the, what's the big yeah. deal? <laughs> I think it's maybe one of those things like the horrible don't feed the model signs, don't talk to the singers. Uh, well. maybe, maybe that's necessary sometimes. No, I don't know. That was poor taste. <laughs> no, but I, you know, yeah, I mean, you, you, you joke. But of course, I, you know, I've gone, as I, I never failed to mention that I've gone through quite a big change in my, you know, approach mm. to music over the last, you know, 10, 11, 12 years. I'm starting out as a piano player, then going into singing and then realizing I was a terrible singer and then realizing that actually singers need to practice and, you know, all that sort of stuff that, you know, seems kind of silly looking back, but like, how, why did mm. I have that impression? But of course I was, I was a teenager. So excuse me, teenagers yeah. are dumb. So, <laughs> you <know? laughs> but, you know, having seen both sides, I have definitely noticed that people talk to singers very differently than they do oh, yeah. to instrumentalists. And I dare say yeah. often in a negative way. Um, I was uh, thinking about if there were any particular examples I could mention where, you know, I wasn't you know, like exposing anyone. Um, I, I, I was uh, looking through some emails. This wasn't directed to me personally, but I was CC'd and uh, mm -hmm. someone was uh, working for a big university and they had a there was apparently like a singer masterclass and they had a really famous opera singer in who was given a masterclass and he was talking about the singers that were going to the masterclass and basically the words he used were akin to them being cattle and how they had to be shepherded around um that he was their babysitter that mm -hmm. you know those kinds of words um <clears throat> which i I mean, maybe he was the kind of person who would use those kinds of words about the string mm -hmm. players as well, but I somehow don't believe that. It's um, okay. maybe it goes a little bit hand in hand, hand in hand with this thing we've talked about before, which is that singers are seen as a bit separate. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. When you're doing your rehearsals, the singers will rehearse separately from the instrumentalists. They'll come in later, yeah. and then naturally and, also, and unfortunately, yeah. because of the way people are, we tend to then see them as separate things mm. and also because of like um um i mean a lot of the time with like singers are grouped together with a sort of um which i think we've talked about in the past uh, like a lot of the time um the the main sort of view of singers a lot of the time is that maybe it's you know people singing in choirs or community groups and um, who do it for the fun of it and then obviously join orchestras and join um, musicians in concert. Um, but then there is that separation of people who are professional musicians and people who aren't professional musicians. Mm. Um, and then, and then yeah, I don't know, sometimes the sort of a, a negativity can kind of come from that mm -hmm. and the sort of generalization of, oh, singers, Singers can't count. Singers 
a flat or <laughs> singers are this, singers are, singers are that. Um, and then occasionally you talk to singers the same. Like I often, I often perceive like, well, I don't know. I, I know that there are a few people around. I haven't had this luckily myself that much um, because I've been, I feel like I've been quite lucky to work with a lot of great musical directors and conductors. Um, but there is that sort of talking to groups of singers almost as children hmm. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you have to, like, <laughs> you know, it's uh, frustrating, but hmm. big groups of people, they, they can they can cackle between, between rehearsing a piece and the next hmm. one and, you know. Yeah, and I think it, uh, this probably applies, you know, it applies to every type of instrumentalist I, the, I've, yeah. I've been in big bands and they were so yeah. chatty it was just like never-ending chatter and uh worse than that because they also all had like an instrument in their hands they would also then sit and kind of play on their instrument and then talk yeah. and they play and it was just like this constant mush of noise instruments and sound. voices <laughs> and you know with singers at least they only have their voices yeah. but yeah i see what you mean and yeah singing is a bit unique in that it's a field where <clears throat> sorry in in choral music especially it's a field that is that largely consists of enthusiasts amateurs mm. there are very few truly professional choirs um and a lot of the time it'll be you know kind of a glorified community choir where mm. it's you know people are paying to be there and people you know perform for free pretty much uh, as they're you know run by our, either a charity or something and so yeah. that does kind of creates a very different environment from say the orchestra where everyone is paid to be there and it's you know it's it's a mm. job um yeah. and there are certain expectations in place that maybe aren't there for someone who's doing it as their hobby and of course Mm-mm. the choir in this case would be the paying customer they're paying to get the experience yeah. and so that creates a very different dynamic when mm-hmm. you know you have the violin who's paid yeah. to be there and do paid to be there do their job yeah, yeah. so there is certainly a gap there in mm. the choral world. But talking to singers. Um, yes. <laughs> we're kind of <laughs> bearing off topic, but that's fine. Talking to singers. No, so it's... I was thinking about who is doing the talking because it is, it yeah. is a, an important distinction to make here because there's obviously the MD, which is, and of course, the way the, the, way the MD or conductor talks to the mm. singers is very important because they're in charge of the music and they need to be able to communicate. Yeah with the musicians uh but if you're in a band so you're the lead singer in a band then that mm. will also create uh, uh, that'll create a slightly different dynamic yeah and of course there's the way other singers talk to you and about yeah. you and with you and um and non-musicians as well <laughs> non-musicians we can add to, to this. add another dimension yeah and uh with each yeah. of these it'll be slightly different so of course the md their job is to create the best possible music um mm. and so in my opinion an md will talk to the singers in whatever way gets them to do a good job um, yeah i don't know i mean that's the ideal isn't it <laughs> that's the idea but then, it doesn't then obviously it's very individual like how 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 mds approach that um i mean yeah have you had there are so many different tactics for it as well <laughs> do you have any like particularly good or bad examples of the way an md has or you don't have to say names, but like any particularly positive experiences or particularly negative experiences? Uh, well, I think it all boils down to sort of, um, I feel like it makes a huge difference when when you get the sense that an MD really hears what's going on and really mm-hmm. um, meets whatever the group is at, at their level as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I've seen sometimes where that just doesn't really um but that just doesn't really happen where someone has a sort of one size one size fits all approach to um directing directing a piece of music without without knowing without knowing at all what how to achieve what they want and i mean i've been in that you we've we've talked about this before but like we've both been in the context of doing of singing in exams with um md students um hmm. teaching an arrangement and leading a rehearsal of an arrangement. And that's, I think you see a lot of, obviously it's people who are, who have never done it before. Um, but there are, 
some patterns that are kind of recurring um and i think it's um it's uh, hugely problematic if the music director doesn't know themselves what they want to achieve from the piece that they're conducting mm. uh or either doesn't know the piece that they're conducting if they need to know it or doesn't have the doesn't have the ability to um um to read read along and see see if something goes wrong yeah. um or who doesn't for example pick up on something that isn't quite right um and then and then it's like obviously the whole story of how do you how, how what do you how do you teach yourself to approach things in in a good matter but i think for me the best in a choir situation um i just like when things plow ahead and when it happens and for the md to hear that if something is not going right in a part just look over it if it completely falls apart then sure of course like stop the thing but um but yeah I don't yeah, know. That's it's, not it's, about talking to see. That's not about talking to singers at all. Yeah, well, but you say that, but, but it is kind of related. A good MD mm. will kind of, of course, they'll come prepared, but they'll also know how to resolve any issues that yeah. happen. What's the yeah. best approach, and how do you convey that? And I think I'm also like you, where I like things to just plow ahead and then um, give people a chance to get familiar with it, and then just go through mm. it. You know, go through individual sections, just yeah. sing through them. Like it's give, have have some faith. Um, yeah and i think the fine balance as well though is to sort of like to trust people in the first to trust people initially at least to take responsibility for their own grasp of things and to uh, trust that people will hold themselves accountable um mm. and realize if they're doing something wrong and if they're not getting it um raise the question obviously that's not always possible depending on what context it is mm. and i think talking to singers it's such a different thing like of course depending on who is talking to the singers but also how many singers at one at one given time because yeah. if there's a group if you're um an md leading an ensemble of eight that's very different to an ensemble of 80. <laughs> yeah absolutely um obviously and you can't you have to you have to generalize if you're if you're leading a big group and then i think there is a way of kind of um I like when it's not accusational. I like when it's, um, oh, this is not sounding quite right yet, um, as opposed to you guys are doing it wrong, mm -hmm. even though those guys are doing it wrong. <laughs> um, it's, um, and then from there, like you can't always control everything either. Like some people will take responsibility for learning their parts and others won't, um, and with big groups. That can sometimes be the be a problem, um, but yeah. But when you're sort of, if you're a music director talking to an individual singer, then I think it can be it can be a lot more open. Um, it can be much freer communication, I think. And I think in those instances, like depending as well on what it is, if it's something that's instigated by by the singer or the music director but if you're if you're working on a piece together then a lot of it will have to come from from within the singers um actually as well because they're going to be the ones to decide what their interpretation is if it's a solo piece uh, ultimately like mm. someone else will obviously be able to give them direction but it's going to have to come from them. So then I think the most helpful is to to talk in a way that gets that gets the right thing out of that person or to that helps them get to where they want to go with it. Mm. And that's hugely individual, depending on the person. Yeah, I it's, think. it's very hard to find a single solution there. But I also think this applies to any musician because people respond very differently to mm. feedback, to critique. Um, I know, I know yeah. you know, you and I are kind of the same way. We will be our own worst critic. We will always find <laughs> problems with everything we do. And we there is nothing anyone could say that we haven't always already thought about. Uh, every single note we sang wrong, <laughs> we remember it. And we, you know, we strive to, to be as yeah. good as possible. And I think it's better to assume that people 
are have that approach mm. before you then think that actually they're clueless or they don't know that this isn't working yeah. or they because I think most people just want to do a good job you know you have more fun as a performer if you know what you're doing this isn't yeah. you know uh, especially if you're the, you know in a group where you're paying to be there you want to have fun you want it to be mm. enjoyable and part of it being enjoyable is knowing what you're doing so yeah. I think a lot of people will you know want to put in the effort and learn so just assuming yeah. that assuming that that's where they're coming from before you mm. claim that they've you know not prepared yeah and of course they, exactly. might, they might not have prepared that's very true yeah might be true but it's perhaps not best to jump to that before you've seen a pattern yeah. emerge and i think also the sort of um like i mean if we think about how singers talk to singers like if you're singing in a in a group with mm. people and um and we, you we have talk to... about each other a lot don't we <laughs> i don't know uh but i mean to each other i think oh, yeah. um it's the like how do you talk to each other mm -hmm. um and and like if you if you're for for example if you're noticing that something is consistently happening somewhere when you're singing with the same group and it keeps keeps happening mm. um then i think it's great to raise that and if in the first instance you're not sure exactly which voice it's from and even if you know maybe if even if you have an idea then at least you can raise it as a thing could we look over this because i feel like it's not sounding quite right because it could be you as well <laughs> like you yeah, never yeah. know uh but even but even if it isn't like if you are looking over something and something is still kind of not quite right then you can raise it and you can sort of discover collectively so it's not just you um, fingers. <laughs> pointing it's you. the fingers your at fault <laughs> yeah uh, you know and i think it's like like generally as well i think there has to be an awareness when you talk to singers regardless of whether you are one or you aren't one that actually singing as an instrument makes you like i feel like it's quite vu quite vulnerable because your voice is so personal it's such a such a huge part of you and obviously i'm not saying that um a cellist's cello isn't very personal and their instrument is is personal but i think i think there's so much vulnerability associated with voice mm. um and because it's not necessarily always as easy or straightforward to to hear if something is to, to hear in the moment if something is right like yeah. that's the thing that takes a lot of training it's always a problem um, that you observe your voice from inside your yeah. head so yeah. what you're hearing inside here is not reflecting what's coming out and it's making that connection is surprisingly difficult like it took me mm. a long time and i, I you know I, yeah. I like to think of myself as you know quite tuned into these things and it took me a long time to realize that actually the voice i'm hearing in my head is not the same voice that's coming out yeah <laughs> yeah well it's such it's such good practice just generally to to listen to to listen to recordings mm -hmm. of, of oneself and um like i'm not i think i'm, I'm quite used to hearing myself sing um by now but i'm still not very accustomed to hearing myself talk um <laughs> and i know i know what i sound like when i sound because i have heard my voice recorded um but it's it, yeah it's not how i think i sound in my head <laughs> I, yeah. I, sound, I sound a bit well, most of the time i sound a bit better in my head when i talk like just a bit more this but this grounded is, and intelligent uh, this is uh <laughs> th this is something they've looked into like researchers have looked into it it's mm. the case for everyone everyone thinks their voice sounds mm. nicer inside their head than on recording yeah so and that's what we used to i guess <laughs> maybe there's a filter like a sort of filter that makes it nicer because i suppose we're the ones who have to hear our own voice the most <laughs> ultimately <laughs> mm. Yeah. has anyone yeah. talked to you like what have you got a really bad or really good example of like um thing at all? yeah i have i um i definitely have had some quite i mean especially in my early choral singing career back when i you know objectively wasn't very good not everyone who was trying to tell me this were doing it in the the kindest way Mm -hmm. And I do uh, remember that it did a number on my mental health. And mm. it's, it is true, as you say, it is, 
you know, it's your voice. And of course, you know, it, it goes without saying that the, you practice something, you get good at it. And if you haven't practiced it for years and years, naturally, you're not going to be as, as good as someone who has. Mm. But maybe there's something about your voice being how you communicate. You know, this is how, yeah. such a big part of your person is how you communicate with other hum human beings. And of course, you don't mm. sing at people, you know, day to day necessarily but <laughs> speak for yourself <laughs> well, <laughs> but it is kind of it's very easy to take you know especially when you're at like i think i think there is a slight element i'm this might be mm. a little controversial i think there's an element of the dunn and kruger effect when it comes to singing mm. it, the less skilled you are as a singer the more likely you are to take it personally when someone tells you this isn't working this is working yeah. whereas when you know now that i'm uh, you know now that i like to, i like to think that i'm a pretty good singer <laughs> now, but like now that i've gone through that process of mm. realizing when i'm flat and working on that and realizing when mm. i'm singing in the nose and working on that if someone then tells me can you get your flat here then i'll be like okay well then i know what to mm. do so it's fine it, you know yeah. it happens in the past i would have been like <laughs> I'm flat, but I thought I sang so well. Mm. I thought I did such a good job. Yeah. Why are you being and so I mean think... to me? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I think as well, it's like, it's that thing of, um... but then that's that's also like, there's so much in, as you say, like how you how you say that, how you convey that. Mm. Like, because if you, make, if you make a very small deal about it, then it is, then it remains a quite a small deal because we all know that like, there are going to be dodgy notes somewhere. Yeah. Not everything is going to sound perfect all the time uh and actually like i think certainly i know it to be true of myself and i know it to be true of you like if there is something that's that keeps being consistently um a little flat to the point where i might not hear it in the moment but someone near me can hear it mm. um, or a little in, in my case it's often I, I i have a tendency to go sharp and i know that um <laughs> so that's what i listen out for a lot mm -hmm. and that's the sort of thing that i really I really want people to tell me so that I can fix it um, and be aware in those particular moments. Um, but yeah, yeah, people then, are going to be it's different. Also, and yeah, of course, and it's, people... so, it's so different, and it's so hard because people know it's quite a you know because people know that people can be upset or take it personally or whatever. Like you know, you want to approach it in a sort of um, in a sensitive way and sometimes i think it can get to the and that's something that i i could probably be guilty of like almost overthinking it and almost being over sensitive in the way in the way you, you tell someone that that it's not quite right mm -hmm. like um you do the whole song and dance about oh yeah i'm really sorry but just like just so you know this is mm, yeah, mm, well, that's just being know. british though trace yeah <laughs> i think it applies to swedishness as well how is it really dark all of a sudden like yeah, i feel like my are, you, my face is doing... just getting increasingly covered in shade yeah, i think yeah. it's just the rainy weather uh, you, you talk a bit and i'll turn my light on just to see what happens. <laughs> that's all right you're listening <laughs> oh she's not listening okay well um what i wanted to um <laughs> there she is what i it's wanted us to <laughs> talk about is so It'll be different when you're talking to, say, a session singer and, and an, you know, an amateur enthusiast. And I think yeah. it's also very important when you talk to singers to know what are you trying to achieve and how is it going to be received? Because, OK, so imagine mm -hmm. I'm conducting a choir, a community choir. I know that I'm not working with professional singers. I know that these are people who sing for fun. Some of them may yeah. be very skilled. Some of them may be terrible. Mm. And... I think that does, I have to take that into account with my feedback. I can't expect them to sound like the King Singers. It's unreasonable. Mm. And I think already by then setting myself into that mindset, it'd be like, what can I achieve? What should I expect? And what should I push for? Mm. So yeah. if I find that actually this bit, the the altars are singing flat, yeah. should I tell them that? Or should I say it something else? Should I, you know... Um, mm should I use different vocabulary to achieve the same yeah. thing? And I think it's very important, uh, you know, to know that someone who yeah. isn't a professional singer, if you tell them that they're flat, they might not know how to fix it. They might not know yeah. that, okay, so I'm probably doing this, 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 I'm putting tension here, I'm putting tension there. They might be like, yeah. I'm singing flat. And then they'll try to overcompensate and tense up and like try so hard to get it. And yeah, almost by doing so, 
achieving the opposite and of course it, then yeah, it gets yeah. even worse and it just builds up so how do you then talk to someone let's take the example of being flat because it's a very common unfortunately problem for singers mm. is that it's very easy to go flat how do you tell an amateur singer to not be flat in a way that isn't gonna make them sing worse for instance mm. Mm. well i mean it's uh, again i think it's about sort of meeting people as people and um and respecting that at the end of the day everyone's human and everybody's got everybody's at different levels everybody's got different ways of communicating um but in terms of uh with with amateur singers a lot of the time i suppose it's uh, talking depending on what they're let's assume they're not uh, necessarily perfect sight readers um maybe it's a choir that doesn't even really learn by reading and they mo maybe learn everything by ear um then i think there are other ways of getting them to sort of like i, I think if it's a problem the first step a lot of the time is getting people to hear it mm. <laughs> uh because if you're not hearing what's going wrong then it's quite it's quite difficult um yeah. i think a lot of problems as well. yeah, i think a lot of problems start because people aren't singing with aren't their listening ears. they're not singing yeah with their ears. exactly um, yeah and which we've talked about before as well <laughs> yeah it also goes hand in hand with people singing too loud they're not they're singing loud they can't yeah. hear what's happening and so what's what's coming out is coming out and yeah yeah it's uh I, I quite like the exercise we've done in LCV a few times, which is that you sing, uh, you, you pick a note, any notes, and you sing it to uh, the same vowel as everyone else, and you just sing it very quietly mm. so that only you and the people around you can hear it. And you really yeah. kind of get to hear how your voice slots in with everything around it. Yeah. Because the focus is on, on blend. And, mm. you know, you can do that in more kind of tonal approaches as yeah. well, where you have like a chord that moves down with the chord and uh, mm. focusing on the listening side rather than the yeah. blasting it out full force side um yeah which... and focusing on the blend i think a lot mm. of the time it's like i think maybe that's an easier instruction sometimes like mm. try to blend more try to blend more rather than um you're going flat um brighten it <laughs> <laughs> uh, but obviously like if it is if it is the thing of like um things going flat like a very common solution is getting everyone to smile obviously <laughs> smile because yeah because which does work a lot to, of the time people tend to lift their tongue a bit and kind of put everything so that it yeah. focuses the sound yeah it's uh yeah. It's, it's it's a it's an it's a quick fix uh it does actually work which is really funny uh i think mm -hmm. um but i'm also i'm all quite fond of of uh, making people aware of breath control because if you control mm. your breath it's easier for you also then to control all the control muscles the around yeah, yeah yeah um there's there's definitely ways of doing it i'd say think about presenting it as sort of an exercise for everyone to do rather than pointing mm. out your flat exactly <laughs> and that and that again relates to how to talk to people mm. and like when you're talking to groups of singers like don't victimize <laughs> or criminalize yeah. like it's a collective it's, effort it's also it's a collective effort it's everyone's responsible for the sound at the end of the day um and i think it's easier to sort of if you see that someone's taking something very much to heart and you know that they're not part of the problem, it's quite easy to have a conversation with that person aside at mm -hmm. a different point and just sort of make it clear that I knew I, I saw you were taking this on board, but don't worry too much because yeah. it's mostly not you or whatever. But And I think also, unfortunately, uh, there will always be a few people that will kind of pull a bit more. There will be people who take on responsibility there will be people yeah. who always spend a lot of time getting prepared. There will be people for various reasons who maybe can't prepare as much. Maybe they've got a lot of stuff on at work or, yeah. you know. Kids at home. Anything like that. There will be, yeah. there will always be a discrepancy in, yeah. unless you're talking about the very upper echelon of, of choir singing where everyone's at that level. In any other mm. group setting, there will be a wide variety of, of experience yeah. and background. Yeah. And, it's really hard to um, to find common mm. ground there unless you're treating everyone as a collective that's cooperating. Yeah. The second you start pointing fingers, people get defensive. Mm. They will, you know, it'll be become an uncomfortable thing. And of course, there is a massive difference if you're 
paying a group of singers to be there, then you, yeah. you know, are rightfully, you know, allowed to assume or, or sorry, expect greater things from each of them individually. But if they're mm. paying you to be in your choir and you're pointing at them and giving them a nasty experience, then that, well, it'll do two things. It'll make them feel uncomfortable and it'll make you lose a customer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, um yeah and i might ask for a refund but and not come back that being said i i don't think that you should then be coddling someone who's definitely who's having a laugh who's not preparing who's messing no. around who's, there's because then it then starts to affect the other singers it'll be yeah. it's equally frustrating if you're putting in a lot of hard work and you're observing someone else not putting in a lot of hard work yeah and, and getting away with it you know and yeah no of course and that's also not like that's usually not the experience that people pay for unless it's explicitly mm. said that you know just turn up and sing we don't really care mm -hmm. if you want to do it or not like i don't know <laughs> but like that's that's a different thing and that's that's a thing too obviously like you know sometimes you just have sing-along groups mm. and it is purely for the fun and it doesn't matter what comes out um but also to be said like um even in professional settings uh, it's still the case. I think that everybody's often, everybody comes from different backgrounds. Everybody has um, varying experiences and um, and obviously everyone's an individual as well. So mm. some people will inevitably respond differently to different things and will have different um, specialisms and different particular skills, as it were. Yeah, I think, I think at the end of the, the day, of you know, you're working towards a performance, you're cooperating for a performance. Uh, my experience mm -hmm. is that if the best performance comes from people who are confident and comfortable and, you know, and feel like they belong. And yeah. I think that goes, whether you're an amateur or you're professional, there, there is nothing to be gained by alienating people with, you know, no. harsh. And I, I know that there's, unfortunately, I know that this still happens, but I think in the past it was worse with a lot of musical directors being very aggressive and mm. you know and pointing fingers and literally throwing people out if they play mm. a couple of notes like it's it's very unkind yeah. and being in music as a job is hard enough as it is without also being enemies with your mm. colleagues yeah. uh, so I, I think there's very little to be gained by being aggressive in the way you talk to anyone well, in mm. general, but it's particularly musicians talking to each other and yeah. people who are leading singers talking to their singers. All you're going to achieve true. is you're going to make people defensive. You're going to make people not want to come. And you're also probably mm. going to make the other people think that you're being unnecessarily cruel. Yeah. And you might miss out. You mm. might if you're not getting because that I mean, that uh, that's not to say, obviously, that you can't be that you can't have a lot of discipline within your group and that you can't be. Mm very demanding because obviously that's great too because that can achieve great results but um but if you are alienating and if you are um aggressive you might also not get the best of people um you'll just get the scared version of, <laughs> of them <laughs> yeah. but yeah so I, uh, I guess we can kind of summarize what we've been saying talking to singers um treat them it's highly individual it's highly individual <laughs> but i say generally treat them with respect be aware yeah. that they're probably doing the best they can they will they're, they're likely to be their own worst critic and think about what you what you want from them and how is what you're giving them likely to translate is mm. is it perhaps better to let this thing go because it's not important and rather focus on this thing yeah at the end of the day your singers are probably going to do the best possible job if they're comfortable and happy and yeah anyway i think we might have to cut it here because we've got a lot of time uh thank you very much uh for joining us today i want to say special thanks to josh moore who said listen louder than you sing in the chat which i think uh oh, yeah. you know is uh good uh a good uh, tip uh, you know in general here you use yeah, your ears it's, it's a good little rule to live by isn't it <laughs> um be sure to leave us any comments if you have any thoughts about this topic if you feel strongly that you should really in fact talk to your singers quite aggressively and here's why uh you know maybe there is someone who thinks that do prove uh, us wrong <laughs> <laughs> prove us wrong 
Um, and yeah, be sure to join us next week. What are we talking about next week? We're talking about feelings. Oh, the feeling. We're talking about how to achieve the right yeah. feeling in music. <laughs> you know, kind of flowery, but yeah, it's it's yeah. an interesting topic. Um, and yeah, be sure to tune in then. Same same time, same place. <laughs> Yay! And we'll see you uh, in the next stream. Bye bye. <laughs>